So tomorrow um, is the six week mark from when I had my hip surgery. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a rundown. Now, if you've been following me, you realize that mine was nothing like an average or a normal um, progression of, uh, of, of getting better um, as most people's are. So I was admitted on the day of the surgery and everything was fine. All my vitals were fine. Everything was fine because I have CAA. There was a plan put in place that um, I would have a minimal amount of blood thinners on the day of the surgery and followed by um, about, I don't know, 40, uh, I don't know, 40 something days of 100 milligram aspirin. One a day. Um, this was kind of the compromise um, to how long I should have had it. So, you know, what can you do? I could live with hip pain and I was also thinking more of quality of life all those things that go through your mind um so i had the surgery on that day and that went well um, but at night time i had a hard time because uh, when they pop you back in bed they um you have to sit there with lay flat on your back with a wedge between your legs so that you don't um, get the urge to turn over and even if you do you can't but I also suffer from a bad back now that is what gave me the problem having to lay in that one position um, with this extreme back pain and it was crazy and um, the medication they were giving me were not the run of the mill that you would normally get I think if you had a hip surgery because again um you've got lots <sighs> you've got to be careful what's in the pain relief and also i had uh, a few allergies so it was decided just to put me on to tramadol that i was already on but it wasn't doing anything for my hip so i spent nearly all night crying out in pain um because of the pain and um I was incredible. If my thoughts are a bit fuzzy, my memory, so much has happened. I've been in and out of hospital since then that my memory's not always real clear on what actually happened. Um, I think I was woken up something like, well, not woken up because I was awake all night, uh, but the nurse came in about four o'clock in the morning and uh, um, got me in a in, on a commode and into the toilet to to go to the toilet and that went all right and the next day physio came and attempted to get me out of bed which was an utter failure but that's okay because they said you know you're laying on your back all the you know for 14 24 whatever amount of hours and sometimes you go lightheaded and it just doesn't work the first time so I got back into bed but by the end of the day, I was out sitting in a chair and it was a good progression. And I was happy with how I was progressing and moving around. i uh, very happy uh, for that. Uh, days in hospital progress normally. Um, I was learning to walk, learning to walk on the walker. Um, I was admitted on the 26th, on the 29th, I was allowed to go home. And I had um, the final, what do you call it, where they check you out and see whether the, you know, the physio thinks you can go home safely and whether you can walk and da 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 da. So everything was fine. Everything was, was on track to be successful. And um, I went home and Friday was the 29th and it was Easter Friday. And I enjoyed the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which was the Easter 
um, holiday and um, and then uh, on the Tuesday after the Easter Monday I can get my hands on this yeah. um, I climbed into bed to um, do my exercises for my legs and uh, my husband obviously was there to help me and he just commented that um, spread down both legs were tiny little red dots and we didn't really think anything of it not too much about it and um, so we did the exercises and uh, I got out of bed and I sat and uh, yeah, we had visitors and, and then my husband um, had to take the dog to the vet at one o'clock and the visitors had gone and um, I uh, needed to go to the toilet and so um, I went to the toilet, I got myself to the toilet and I, I just had the worst diarrhea ever that I'd ever experienced and the pain was incredible. I did that, I got through that, cleaned myself up and um, you know, my husband came home, medication for the dog and then about, I don't know, six or something, now I had pyjama pants on so I hadn't looked at my legs right and then about six o'clock I needed to go to the toilet again diarrhea and my husband came into the bathroom and um, dropped my my pajama pants and we could not believe my two my whole leg from from ankle to the top of my thighs on both legs was just this most horrendous rash it was horrendous it wasn't itchy I didn't even know I had it there but it had just progressed so much in those so many hours you know and and then I had the extreme diarrhea and I felt faint and the color I, it was, I went gray clammy couldn't really breathe very well so they called me an ambulance and we did that for two reasons. Um, maybe if I had just had diarrhea, no rash, no hip operation, I probably would have just sat and sort of, you know, worked out, just worked things out. But, you know, everything combined and coming out of the hospital. So, so I was taken obviously to a different hospital than where I had the operation. And, um, and they just couldn't, because by then my legs were even more harsh you couldn't really call it a rash anymore it was just it was almost like a pigmentation all down my legs and you know you, as you do you sit hours in the in the emergency and I think I just sat in a special room for um, 48 hours very hard because again I'd had hip surgery so they were aware of that I had a commode sitting beside me um, because I needed help getting in and out and by the time a nurse got there it was a, not a lot of time and I still had diarrhea and um, but they were very very aware of my hip everything they did concerned my hip they were neurologically testing me because I was on blood thinners and I have CAA. The attention I got was amazing and I got, I'm sure the cook from upstairs even came and checked my leg out because they were all mesmerized by my legs. So while I was in hospital, I'm just gonna get my cane. Uh, when I was in hospital, um, they did all sorts of testing on me, um, kidney, heart, um, just so many, so many things. And for some reason it came up that maybe I was having an allergic reaction to some medication that I'd been given and taken. Um, and they seem to hook on to that thought process 
for a while. More and more, more and more, um, yeah, they were kept saying, I think it's an allergic reaction. But because all my tests were coming back good, um, not really, no, no real causes for alarm, and they couldn't understand why I was so well on the inside, but this was happening on the outside. Then um, I was allowed to go home and wait for the results. Uh, they did a biopsy on my leg and they decided that they would um, let me go home and wait for the results there rather than sort of spend another two days in hospital. So I did that. So the, that was so back in on the 2nd of April for a couple of days and then home and because I had an outpatient appointment they were going to let me go home and wait for the results um, which I did that and then on the 10th um, the pain was just getting worse and worse and the rash was now turning into crusty sores like literally my legs were just crusty sores that were spreading all across my legs and on the 10th pain was so intense that I was manic with pain I was screaming in pain um, I wanted to hit my head on the wall I was talking about God and how I must have been um, I was delirious like so delirious and that, you know, I must have been a bad person and God was punishing me and it was, and I really frightened my husband. So he called another ambulance and I went to another hospital, but the last two hospitals were linked. So that worked out all right because I could, they already had my, you know. But meanwhile, while I had gone to the accident emergency in the first hospital, and while I sat there, still with diarrhea, still pooping, two different times, two different nurses, whatever, doctors, nurses, thought that they saw blood in my stool. So they had the, you know, cleverness to, let me just sit down again, to take some samples and send them off to get it checked. And they came back, and yes, it, you know, each one was positive for uh, the blood in the stools, but nothing actually. All the, well, I won't say nothing was done because I think that's why they did all the kidney tests and the blood tests and more tests and liver tests. Um, I think now, in retrospect, that's actually why they did that, and. Um, And so I think maybe they didn't, didn't worry too much about it because everything came back normal. And I know they tested for cancer, however they do that. And um, it came back, everything was okay. Everything, all the levels were in the right, where they were supposed to be. Um, then, as I say, the, the night of the 10th and then the 11th, I went to A and E and... I'd been taking the painkillers and that wasn't working and the pain threshold had just erupted. I just, I was probably glad I wasn't by myself at that stage, let me tell you, because I'm not really sure. I think that could have ended up nasty because I totally lost all of, of where I was, what was going on. Now, because a few days after that, I had another follow-up um, outpatient um, and because in the course of like 14 or 15 hours we were in emergency waiting to be seen and I was being given painkillers regularly the pain had subsided somewhat it wasn't gone but it never reached the crescendo crescendo that it had got to 
<sighs> it was madness. And all the time this is going on, I cannot do my leg exercises, my hip exercises. I had so many now pus filled sores up and down the front and back of my legs that just to lay on a sheet was excruciating. Have a sheet laying on top of my legs was excruciating. And they basically fell to the side for my hip and I was very worried because now I knew that you know I was quite a way behind in the exercises and the walking because I couldn't walk the pain in my legs and my ankles and if you want to look back through my videos you'll see some photos there's no way you could even call the rash on my leg a rash anymore. It was crusty sores, oozing pus. I did, um, I did hire a physio to come in and see, <clears throat> you know, what her take, what we could do. She came up with some good ideas, some really good ideas, and one being when you have to lay on your bed and you have to on your back on your bed and you're doing some of the exercises are you basically you know push your heel into the bed the base of you know the mattress and pull your leg up so the your leg is really scraping along the, the sheet and you bring it into like bring your knee up I couldn't do that because it was knocking off all the sores and they were bleeding and she came up with this really really good idea of getting a, a big garbage bag and putting that down between the sheet and my leg and then as I dug my heel into the mattress the actual garbage bag would slide and that solved that problem. Um, I was still still behind and one of the problems I had was and you can say I'm nuts but I've actually proved it now the, the, the leg with the hip replacement was longer than the other leg so what that meant was I, what that meant was, when I was trying to walk, I was limping, right? And everyone said I was mad, but I kept saying that this leg is definitely longer. So that was making it very difficult for me to walk because then two things were happening. I was limping, but then I was favoring the other leg. That then flowed onto my back, which was then giving me extreme pain. I was also sitting in a jerry chair, which is a similar, it's the kind of chair that you have in a hospital. You know, that solid chair that you can sit on with the great arms and you can push yourself up. Well, my jerry chair, I, you know, we actually got it through a government grant, so it didn't cost me anything personally. But it was to the value, I think, of about $400, $500, $300. It was around that. So it wasn't a cheap, a cheap chair. But it was awful. There was no padding. Well, not enough padding that you'd want to sit in it for 12 hours. I mean, I wasn't sitting in it continually for 12 hours. I was getting up every hour. I was still walking, even on this extreme pain. I was going outside and I was walking and this is my garden, you know, so um, walking around there trying to keep the walking up, like, trying to make sure that I was, you know, walking every hour that I was walking for at least 10 minutes. Um, and over time I ventured out of the gate and I walked up and down from the house block beside me in one way 
and two and a half house blocks the other way but because of the pain in my leg I couldn't I just turned around and come back and forth I just couldn't risk going too far out of the way in case I fell over or I couldn't walk properly the effort that it took to walk um, meant that I couldn't even go sort of around a shopping centre because that had been our plan that we would every day you know go for a couple of hours to the local sh shopping centre or the mall um, browse around the shops go and have a coffee walk you know so that your mind isn't there that you're walking you're looking and uh, that was our plan it's never come to fruition I I mentioned it a couple of times about my leg being a different height to um, my physio and I, I haven't had a follow-up yet with my surgeon that's next week and you know they kind of look at you as if you're nuts but realistically I knew I wasn't wrong and in fact the one time I did go to the mall I decided because mentally my mental health was going downhill I wasn't coping with the pain and even though um, I was on pain meds to have got the relief I needed in my head I was going to have to be taking much more milligrams and I am way against taking any kind of medication drugs if I can't if I don't need it but this one Saturday I said to, to my husband we have to go out because I hadn't even left the house only to go to in an ambulance <laughs> I'll go and get stitches out from I ended up having two biopsies along the way but I said right I'm gonna go and we're gonna buy a pair of slippers because my left leg both my legs were so swollen um, I've got a photo and honestly it looks like I've got elephant trunk elephant legs they are just square but and I'm slopping around in the, the the left leg is the most swollen and I'm I can only get one pair of shoes on and that's with the heel pushed down because otherwise I can't fit it in a shoe and I also developed a blood blister on just the back of my ankle um, and uh, it's, it hasn't healed so therefore when you put it down put your foot down you've got that pressure so I've had to have cushions under that we had we initially got them all um, treated you know put a dressing on and bandages but what we found was that the bandages and the dressing were knocking continually knocking the sores off so but I went to the shops that day and I felt like I had a big turnaround. It was a nice warm day. I was amazed at the colours in the shops. The colours were so vibrant. And uh, we walked around and I picked out two pairs of slippers and I tried them on the smaller foot and they fitted. So I bought two different pairs. And when I got home, I put on the new one of the new pairs. Now, because it's brand new, it was it actually brought my height up to just about equal to the bad leg. And that is when I realized I was not going mad. For whatever reason, one leg was higher than the other.
up somewhat which obviously is incredibly contradictory somewhat to having a hip replacement but I find if I don't have at least a two hour um, lay down or legs sort of up a bit then by the night time <clears throat> my legs are three times the size the pain is more intense um, and so I um I do try to have oh, get a bit of a pillow there but I do try to have a bit of oh it looks like I've got ears doesn't it yeah I try to have a lay down to try to reduce the swelling and that works pretty good uh, sometimes I sleep because I do wake a couple of times through the night um, especially when the meds wear off so here I am in my room and trying to remember where I ended off the last video and hoping you're not too bored right now uh, this is basically supposed to be a follow-up of the post-op for my hip surgery um, I am finding that um, I'm walking I can walk some times without my cane but that has nothing to do really with my hip um, the pain level and the sudden stabbing pains um, sometimes makes me unsteady so I prefer to have the cane if I'm only sort of going you know from my bedroom to the bathroom or whatever in the mornings I cannot walk at all um, it is I'm crippled over trying to just get on my feet to go to the bathroom um, as far as the, the 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 there is a 12 to third tw about 12 and a half mil if you're going to be pedantic but between 12 and 13 mm, millimeter height difference which is nothing right until you're trying to walk so I'm not going to worry too much about that and I just figure that um, if need be I'll see a podiatrist and just get something made or I might be able to find them on Amazon just to pop into my other shoe to bring that height up somewhat it doesn't have to be perfect but it it will need to be adjusted so that I, because I don't want to create that limp I was talking about um, I'm managing to do especially exercises where you basically stand on one leg and uh, move your leg out to the side um, managing to do that going up and down stairs the only str I struggle not struggle but it's a little bit hard to go downstairs because your ankle has to bend at those and my skin is so tight that it feels like when you flex your foot it feels like it's going to just rip apart it is like a drum and and there's pain from there there's then pain from because because when I shower um, and when I shower I obviously get the legs wet now sometimes we protect the legs because once I shower it almost takes it from the crustiness to a I don't know a watery wet mess which then 
goes red raw, which I believe then triggers all the nerve endings. So I, it, it's playing around a lot. Um, so what else am I doing? I'm still managing to do all the other exercises. I must admit, with everything that's gone on, I have not done them religiously. Um, I always knew I wouldn't because I'm just a lazy person. And that's without having the problems with the legs. Um, I go to see... Oh, I just want to go back one step. I had a great surgeon with great service um, and there was no out-of-pocket gap for me so in Australia I've got private health the private what I had with the private health um, and what my surgeon and my anesthetist um, would normally charge they just accepted the Medicare gap so there was no gap it was just uh, the excess for my first time in a calendar year for going into hospital that was $450 I think 450 or 500 and that is all I paid and in that calendar year if you need to go in and out of hospital which I've done I didn't have to pay the excess again it's a one-time excess in a calendar year and because it was March and April and we're in May now I'm getting my money's worth. Plus, I had two ambulance rides. I did find out from my hospital health, not from my health insurance, that my hip surgery they paid out for my hip surgery fifteen thousand five hundred and something. So <clears throat> I'm very thankful that I've got private health. Um, where are we at now? So. Okay, I'm still sitting in the car um, and getting in the car as I did the very first day I came out of the hospital. How I get in the car is I put a garbage bag on the seat of the car. We push the seat of the car back and recline the back uh, down so I'm not sitting straight up it's back I back up to the car which has been hard because then your legs tend to you, you back up really till your legs touch the frame of the car that gets you as close as you can get except I can't do that because I can't allow my legs to bump into the frame of the car so then I have to get my backside onto my plastic bag and this allows me then to pick up my right leg and start to move it into the car and at the moment and more so because of the pain in my feet my husband is still picking the operated leg up which is the left and helps maneuver it in the car and that's how I get in the car. I can get out of the car now no problem. Uh, the only problem I, I've had was my son came to pick us up for an evening at his house. And he's got this damn high car, <laughs> four-wheel drive thing, to get in. And that was difficult. Doable, difficult. And then when we come home, we always hire an Uber. Because we've had a few drinks, not me, the boys. Had a few drinks. We hire an Uber to bring us home. Not thinking, my son just booked the Uber and then when it turned up, it was a smaller car. Ooh, that was really difficult. I should have told, I should have asked the driver to move his front seat way forward. And I should have, when I went to get in, in the same way, but I should have scooted further. So I'm backing in, but instead of putting my bum on the seat which is what I did I should have scooted back a bit more which would have given me more leg room and maneuverability very difficult getting in my daughter-in-law was trying to help me with the leg first time she'd ever done that bit of a disaster very 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 painful 
but then when we got home I'd worked out in my head okay to get out I need to scoot like to the side and then turn and so we did that so note to yourself when you're going to get a lift somewhere and a hip problem but here I am at the six week mark now I don't know at what stage you can sit again in your comfy lounge chair or when you don't have to sit because I've got to the stage now I've had enough of that jerry chair <clears throat> and so at the end of the night for about one or two hours I sit in the lounge chair because otherwise I have to go to bed because I get agitated my back is killing me my bum hurts I've got a cushion on there I've actually got a memory foam cushion on there it just drives me angry 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 so I allow myself but at what point so when I go see the surgeon next week I'll ask him at what point can I start getting in a car normally at what point can I sit in a lounge chair at what point can I stop sitting in the toilet seat razor that has been a godsend but is so bloody cold because it's metal frame and if I'd had the operation in summer in Australia I probably wouldn't have a problem but we are actually in autumn and it's been damn cold and the sit on the frame just another terrible thing um, and, and other I'm going to make a list of at what point you know can you do this or can you do that because how do you know is it six weeks six to eight weeks six to three months I don't know I've got no pain in my hip my the the, the operation the wound site stayed clean no infection if I didn't have this thing with my feet I would have sailed through with this hip operation you know I don't know what I would do about my back again that would always be a problem that would always be a problem because even though in the very first night was, was it was it was awful 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 but it was I mean the physio came in the next day she showed me how I can tilt onto my right side with a cushion pushed in my back and my knee bent this way well that's all very good but I had like three people doing that her and a couple of the nurses <laughs> plus my participation I tried doing that when she left I, and I actually because I hadn't slept all night I went to sleep for about three hours I could never get in that position again right so I didn't bother but my back and because it was three days and my back when I got home because when I'm asleep and my back starts hurting you know I just flip from one side to the other but obviously I've been a good girl for six weeks no turning over no turning over I've been religiously sticking and I'll tell you another thing my mother-in-law she died in the year 2000 so she's been gone a long time but she had hip surgery and she always told all of us that the doctor she had the surgeon she had told her when you sit in a chair be wriggling your feet all the time and be stomping without stomping but you know you lift one leg put it down lift one leg the other leg put it down but continually do that continually so that your leg is pumping and I believe what that was for was to make sure she didn't have a blood clot I don't know but but anyway it, it's stuck in our it's stuck in everyone's brain so as soon as I said I was having head surgery they said I oh, remember what Doris said and you know but I even when I was sitting my feet are on the move once I got that I could lift my leg again my leg I'm lifting my legs I'm squeezing my butt cheeks I'm trying really really hard I was you know I, this, 
I'm not going to try and tell you I did my exercises because I didn't. They were few and far between, and that was obvious reasons. You know, we're here at six weeks now, and and even though it is a lot better, I still reckon that I've probably got another four weeks to get through with these feet at least. I'm not going to go into any more detail about, you know, what's happening with the legs because this is supposed to be an update on the operation. But if I hadn't had that, it would have been a breeze. It would, And I would easily have jumped and had another one. The problem I have now, because I have been diagnosed, I'll just tell you the diagnosis for this. So it's for a long time they thought it was vasculitis, but they thought that it was triggered by an allergic reaction to the aspirin. I don't know where they got that. I was, I was trying to fight to get my... Um, my medical records from the hospital that I had the operation because it is a private hospital here, here in Australia they do not have to give me any of that and they didn't give me any of that and actually even the the hip surgeon passed me on to the um, anesthesis I didn't even get to talk to the anesthetist only his secretary slash receptionist she kept fobbing me off. She even told me, go to, you know, there's a Freedom of Information Act. Well, there is, but it's only public and government, not private. They don't have to do that. So I was really peed off about that because they were just trying to find out what this could be for my future. You know, for if it was aspirin or if they found something else that they could. Anyway, after lots of testing... It turns out that, yes, I do have vasculitis, but I have a strain or whatever you call it, IgA vasculitis. Again, it looks like it could be triggered by a whole heap of things, one of which could be medication, one of which could be an allergy. So to me, it's the same thing. But it really makes me worried now if I need any other kind of operation. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I told you this just trying to think back and I'll tell you again we did discuss briefly the fact that there was poo in my stools also they thought and they tested and yes it is nothing seemed to have been nothing was really ever said again about it but last week I got a phone call from the first emergency hospital I went to asking me did I was I told that there had been blood in my stools yes they did was anything done and I said no at the time but while I'm making this video I did remember that they did they did test all that sort of stuff but I didn't associate that being anything to do with the pools poos anyway um so they said that um the vasculitis I've got <clears throat> can although the vasculitis itself is not life threatening it does attack the kidneys liver i think it's the heart joints you know so it's something we have to keep an eye on <clears throat> but um so that's going to be a whole new story in itself, perhaps. I don't know. But at my six-week mark, I'm happy with the operation. I'm glad I had the operation. Um, it, it would have been fine if I didn't have this hiccup. Um, I had great service. Um, you know, even from the specialist, from... from oh, because... Oh, um, when I went through him, he, he and another uh, specialist has, it's called the hip, what's it called? The joint replacement clinic. Yeah, joint replacement clinic. And as I say, instead of having to pay the gap for the anesthesis and the gap for the surgeon, I had no out-of-pocket expenses. And that was great because it's, 
you know, I know that my private health paid for everything apart from the gap and I would have had to pay the gap. So that's saved on that. This six weeks has gone incredibly quick, even though each and every day seemed like it was never going to end. Um, oh, sorry, I've got my legs just hurting. Um, I think as a hip replacement, it went fine. Uh, I would tell you to keep up more with your exercises, which I have not. Um, you definitely, I believe, would need somebody with you for, oh, I would say, four weeks if it's possible. Um, you know, my husband in the first, you know, I don't know, couple of weeks showered me. And again, you know, I would it how quickly could I have recovered if I was didn't have a problem? But he showered me, he he really looked after me well, but I was so happy the first time I could shower myself. I was ecstatic the first time I could wipe my backside by myself. Um I can get in bed by myself now. He still helps me lift the leg and that is all to do with the sores on the leg so that I don't bang him on the, the shit, you know, the bed. Um, I'm looking forward to, because it takes a lot of energy out of you trying to walk with this pain. But I'm looking forward to when I can go in the shops rather than I sit in the car and he runs in and, you know, does that. The other night we went to my son's house. So today is... Tuesday so on Sunday we went to my son's house as I said and that is the first I've been to visit my sister-in-law twice and my other and my other sister and brother-in-law once and I've been to see my sister twice in six weeks and that is all that I've done I've had visitors but not been out I'm looking forward to when it's it's not a hassle and the worst part and another reason I never went anywhere is because their toilets are so low it's like you even if the times I've had to go to doctor's appointments and needed to go to the toilet you know I've prayed that there's been like the handrails and that because getting down is hard, getting up is hard if there's no rail, especially if you haven't got real grippy shoes on because you put a lot of effort getting up off the toilet. And if you've got slippy shoes, that's not easy to do. So even visiting people, you know, even when I went to my son's the other night, because I know his toilet is really low, he picked us up at four o'clock I think and I didn't drink anything from three o'clock I went to the toilet before I left I left there we left his house at about 12 30 at night and I had one pee because his toilet's very low very slippy there's absolutely no handrails it's a very small toilet that you can't even grab hold of anything and Trevor had to come in to help me get off my husband had to get in help me get off the toilet so there's little nightmares like that um, it takes a lot of energy to walk and I would also recommend um, a walker like an actual four-wheel rotor I think it's called rotor walker um, they have the seat on so that if you really get tired and and sometimes you your back aches or your leg aches because it's not used to adjusting to that new way of walking and that can be tiring too and I would also suggest if you get a four-wheeled walker that you actually go on YouTube and look up some really good tips on how you should and shouldn't use that walker 
even as far as if you want to sit on that seat you should actually have your walker pushed up against a wall or something so that when you back on to sit onto that seat you're not going to push it away from yourself and cause an accident so just be aware of that I would look into that the main sticks is because I had my husband with me I did have a um, a grip stick so like a pickup stick and I barely used that but that's because my husband was basically there I did use it so I think it's still worth having the foot raiser for the first few days like in hospital I used their foot raiser and then I had bought like a looks like a dog lead but it's made out of the same kind of material and that was great until I developed all the sores on my feet so I couldn't use that anymore but that was a game changer even as far as the first time I did my exercise I couldn't raise my leg the operated leg and what they suggested there is for so many times you hook that onto your foot and you pull that up so you're pulling the foot up and it starts to make a memory and it starts to loosen up and it was good it worked well but then the sores all came over it um what else would i suggest just trying to think always have your garbage bags ready to get in a seat of a car that was that was and and as I say even for your leg exercises that was a handy bit of information to have that was because even if you didn't have sores like I had that would still be handy just to make it a little bit easier for you to move that leg so that that was really really good um, I didn't use my shower seat I sat in it once so there's a special sh sh shower seat I sat in it but I almost slipped off of it because once you get a bit of soapy water on there or even water on there I did end up putting a towel there but even that didn't seem and I just seemed like I wanted to slip off it all the time would I spend the money would I spend the money on a toilet a shower seat again no no we were lucky enough that a few days after I got home we had railings put in the bathroom or the shower we couldn't do it for the toilet because it's just there was no proper stud beam and the weight you exert i'm a bit big lady so that would have been we were worried that that would just pull out and that would be a danger for me we had the railing in the video that's on here you'll see me walking up and down holding on to rail handrail that was put on i think a week after i got home that was put in and um, uh, that was out, out back and out the front I've got um, a handrail to pull me up the step we also have on our front screen door um, we have um, a very strong magnet on the screen door and one on the wall so that to get in and out with your walker or your sticks you can just push the screen and the magnets will hold so that you can get out and you can then shut the door you can actually have like a little chain put on there too so that you know it's easier to grab hold of something like we didn't have that because we got dogs and we thought that somehow that you know they might end up wrecking something so we didn't have that um canes uh, a cane i think i've got a cane here can you see that cane okay so I've got a straight handle cane and some people have a curved but they're very handy they can pick things up um, especially pieces of clothing um, even pulling your knickers up if the if your knickers drop down <laughs> between around the ankles um, and tr or trousers you know you can hook onto them um, even if you get in a car and you haven't got anyone to kind of help you um, you can actually use them to shut the car door or bring it close enough that you can shut the front door um, so there's lots of you can improvise a lot uh, I bought a legs 
a leg raiser but in hindsight if you had a dog lead and you couldn't afford just they're not expensive however not everybody because once you put delivery on that it does boost it up you could use the collar you know a dog leash and use the hand piece now what i did with mine because it was a, a proper leg raiser have i got it here i think i've got it here Hang on. so when i got mine a problem i did have was i'll show you the handle first so this is the handle right so when you let go of the handle it folds straight now that's what it's like on the other end i made a mistake i didn't get the other type you cannot get that on your feet so my sister came up with the idea of getting a little off cut of hose garden hose and what we did was we we cut a piece of hose we spread this apart we put um we slit the hose long ways and we put it over and then we wrapped um what do they call that like a gaffer tape or if someone's being abducted duct tape or you know that sort of thing um after a while i needed i should have gone around a few times with the, the tape uh, because using on your feet we did unravel somewhat but you can see that by improvising you get that kind of scenario and we did it to the length that the width of my foot to make that work so that was good having that um what else i think that's about all the tricks that i learned I was amazing how quickly even with all this that's gone on i've been amazed at how quickly the the time has gone um i'll keep you updated but mainly now i think what i'm talking about now is trying to get through this vasculitis which i believed never leaves your body i think it lays dormant and come can come back and uh um Oh, yes, I told you about the doctor that rang to say, did I know that I had blood in my stools? So he's sending me for a colonoscopy. Now we're going through the public system, so I don't know how quickly that happens. Or I might just go private, because I went to the same sort of guy that did an endoscopy so i think they do both ends so if i want it quicker i'll go to him however i don't want to go under anesthetic i don't i'm scared of this flaring up and i don't know whether you have to be asleep i don't know i might go and have a chat but yeah so i've got to have one of those and keep that try and see what that is but i do have a pain and this pain started when I got the diarrhea and it's it's a certain place in my stomach so I'm somewhat worried about that however we'll deal with that when it comes to it but I think that's about all for the update for my hip unless something else happens um you know when I go and see the surgeon next week I may very well just kind of go I might do a quick one, a quick update if there was if there's anything special. But thank you for following me. I hope that you somewhere along the line may have found something interesting. Uh, I am a lady with CAA, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, a life it's it's a life ending condition. It's a disease. There is no cure. I'm not allowed to take blood thinners. My hip operation was going to need to have blood thinners. Caused the dilemma. We put a plan in place. I no longer take the aspirin, by the way. And I'm 
watching for signs of blood clots because now there's no blood in, in my body. So I went from this being my CAA journey to my, to my hip replacement journey and now my vasculitis journey. But thank you. Please leave me a comment. I don't seem to be able to get every comment. Or you can email me and you'll find on my channel page, you will find an email account. I'm pretty sure it's my CAA journey at Gmail. I think I once before I put the wrong one, but look it up. But if you want to have a chat about CAA, my hip replacement, what it's like to have vasculitis, let's talk. Take care of yourself. You're not alone. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.